said the devil's name three times. So, <laughs> fun one, mate. <laughs> Why are we hiding from the rain under some bamboo near the Minka house? To get a look at the devil's fingers. Let's dig deeper. So it's very appropriate we've come to see this uh, spooky fungi on such a uh, dark and stormy day. We know it as the devil's fingers because the bright red colour um, and tentacle shapes look like the devil's fingers are reaching out from the ground, bursting from below the surface. Um, so we are in amongst the bamboo garden at the Minka house um, and we're here because there's something foul smelling and appalling underneath the bamboo. And I don't mean the children. Okay, so, uh, so this is the bed where we found almost all of the clatterers so far. So it's a big bamboo bed and underneath it all there are dozens and dozens of clatterers coming up. Um, so here we've got loads of these clusters of eggs. So these are the immature fruits that are going to start to hatch. So these egg-like structures are only called eggs because they kind of look like them. The maturing fruiting body is inside of them. The egg helps to protect those structures while they're developing and while the spores uh, are still maturing. And then as they kind of mature, they'll burst open to show this gooey, gray, slimy interior. A little bit further back, you've got some that are halfway out and just emerging. Um, they look really cute. And then here at the front, this is an example of what they're like when they emerge. This sort of splaying red foul octopus that's on the compost. So, and then it's, this is the gleba that's starting to dry up here. That's been attracting all the bugs to go and spread the spores around. These fungi are saprotrophs, so they decay dead organic material. These fungi in particular love to eat wood chips. But you've got some eggs here that are still yet to open up. And you can see these kind of white stringy parts growing off of them. Those are the rhizomorphs. With these uh, stinkhorn fungi, the group of these fungi uh, produce special types of mycelium called rhizomorphs. So they look like thicker kind of roots, white roots that spread across the uh, wood chip. And that's, those essentially act like um, bigger transport systems. It allows them to transport more nutrients across the mycelium so they can essentially spread uh, further and wider you can see the mycelium on the underside, it's quite thick. Um, and these are the, the rhizomorphs here that spread through the compost. What we see, the structure with the fingers, um, is technically just the fruiting body of the fungus, which spends most of its time in a mycelial form, underground degrading things, and it's only when it needs to reproduce does it form this structure. Genitalia. <laughs> So it's genitals. It's the, my, the mycelium produces genitals to have babies, but the main body is this mycelium underground. You could also compare it to the uh, fruits or flowers of a plant. So once they, once these eggs sort of split open, the actual fruiting body emerges out of it, and it looks a bit like a, a squid or an octopus. So it's this sort of bright red, fingery tentacles covered in this brown, foul-smelling gunge, which is the whole reason that these emerge in the first place. Right, tell us more about the gunge. So, the gunge, uh, it's got a scientific name, we call it gleba, um, and it's a muddy, brown, greeny sludge that's stuffed full of spores, which is what the fungus is produced in the first place to produce and spread. So the spores are the, you know, the, the effectively baby fungi that will drift off, but they produce them in this really gross smelling gunge to attract insects who will stomp all over them, eat the slime, and then fly off and disperse the spores for them. To me, it smells a bit like stale, rotting meat and dog poo. <laughs> I think these smell like foul, foul, foul. Uh, poo, meat, rotting together, it's, it's very gross. I think you can sum it up in one word and that's putrid. So we know what compounds they're producing that make this aromatic profile, I guess, if you like. Um, so they produce mostly sulfur-based compounds, which is where you get the the kind of rotting meat type smell from, but then the poo smell comes from uh, compounds like phenol, indole, and p -cresol. Insects have a very uh, keen sense of smell. Their noses are essentially on their antennae where they can pick up molecules from the air and insects would be able to smell out these foul smelling fungi from many, many meters away to track them down and eat that tasty spore mass and help disperse the spores elsewhere. So clathrus, it's in the, the fungal family we call the phalaceae. 
They're the stinkhorns. They're named after the genus Phallus. It's called that because it has a striking anatomical uh, resemblance. However, this one looks more like a squid and this whole family produced these really unusual fruiting bodies that look like everything from a starfish to a sea anemone to a geodesic football covered in slime that's bright yellow. So we have these uh, phallaceae fungi in the UK. So we have the genus Phallus here, uh, the stinkhorn. Um, this particular one, these clathras, these come from Australia and New Zealand um, and they've been introduced into the UK possibly in wood chip or possibly in compost or the soil around plants that are being moved and transported for horticulture and display and what have you. There is a theory that Clathrus archeri was introduced from New Zealand in World War I uh, when they were importing shipments of wool to make uh, uniforms and other supplies for the war. So we know that things like flowers use colour as an attractant for pollinating insects. So in this case it may be that the colour red also helps with attracting insects along with the smell that they produce. But colouring fungi is a weird one because most fungi don't in any way rely on insects as pollinators. So then there's no obvious reason why mushrooms may be all sorts of different colours. And they come in every colour you can conceivably imagine. So it's one of those sort of additional mysterious things about fungi that we don't yet know about. Um, generally with fungi, uh, they like quite damp, wet, uh, cool conditions. Uh, and that's what... Um, kind of causes them to, to go into fruiting mode, to create these fruiting bodies. So we, we do collect fungi from the gardens and we do store them in the fungarium. Some people collect an awful lot constantly. <laughs> um, funnily enough, uh, one of these clathrus archeri from the bamboo here was one of the first things I collected that got incorporated into the fungarium when I started in 2015. The thunder's turned into rain, so we're gonna go and hide in the Minka house. So, so scientifically, this fungus only has one name, so that's Clathrus archeri, which is a lot to remember. So they have three different common names. Different people know them by different names depending on where they are in the world. So uh, one of those is the devil's fingers, but it also gets called the octopus stinkhorn, because it looks like an octopus, or the squid fungus, because it's also squid-like. So there are several uh, fungi in the same family which have a similar appearance, such as um, Asteroi rubra, which has more of a sea anemone appearance. Um, there's also clavarioid fungi, which are club-shaped. Um, and there's also some in the Xylariaceae, uh, such as dead man's fingers, which kind of look like a black and white version, not quite uh, so soft and spongy, they're a bit tough. Uh, but yeah, nothing's quite like it. So that you can find these fungi and they'll last like the egg shape, if you like, the egg form for weeks sometimes. Oh, it's a clown. So you can find these fungi in the egg shape and the egg form for sometimes several weeks before they emerge. Um, but once they do actually hatch out and you've got the finger bits, they'll they usually don't last more than a day or so. So they'll they'll be like bright red and over a day, maybe two days, they'll go floppy and start to decompose. So they're quite short lived once they've hatched. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed coming and checking out the devil's fingers with us. Bye.